as Chad said. Um, I'm here from GE. I work for a small startup at GE called Inspection Works. And our goal really is to be disruptive in the non-destructive test non-destructive testing space, which I know it's not that doesn't sound all that sexy, but it really kind of is. Um, just beat this up. So this is a a visual IQ. So like Jim mentioned earlier, uh, companies made huge investments in these devices. You know, from five, six, eight, ten years ago. You know, these are twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars a piece. And the inspector on the ground, this guy here. He doesn't necessarily have the ability to say, looking at something in an airline engine or a, um, in a nuclear power plant, a valve or a, a gas turbine, a crack, for example. He can't look at that and say definitively, yes, we can do that. Yes, this is clear to, to pass. No, it's not. So what he needs is the ability to, to, to get someone else's opinion, uh, much like if you were going to your doctor and something wasn't quite right, he'd prefer you to a specialist. So these experts, we call them experts, would, would be able to weigh in and say, yes, this airline, this, this engine is clear to fly. Um, the problem is <clears throat> these experts are few and far between. And they're expensive to, to have around. They're not really people you can keep on staff. So there, I've heard many stories from people in the field where what they'll do is they'll fly someone in. And that's prohibitively expensive if you have to do it at scale. So what we wanted to do was take a technology like WebRTC and put it in these legacy devices, some, some new, some old. This one isn't a legacy one, but we have older devices that run, that are Linux-based. This is a Windows 8-based. We have a Windows 7-based uh, Eddy current device. But these video boroscopes are really you know, they're very incredibly useful tools. So this expert on the ground needs to talk to someone and he needs to get a second opinion about a crack or something else. And I'll get that set up in a minute. So what he needs to be able to do is show him what's coming off the boroscope. And at times he needs to not just show him, but he needs to interact with him. Because the expert might ask him, take a measurement or move a little further up the chamber or do any number of things. And a lot of people that I've talked to, a lot of customers I've talked to, use this as a, a training mechanism as well. So these, these guys that are out in the field, they're, they don't have the requisite experience to be able to make that call, but they want them to. So using this as a one, it makes jobs easier, and it makes uh, training easier. It seemed like a great investment for us, and WebRTC was definitely the way to go seen this picture probably a thousand times. This is a little bit about our application. We uh, use AWS. We host our own media servers. There's a lot of good reasons for that, um, not the least of which is it just makes a lot of things easy. Again, custom signaling, uh, JSON over WebSockets. But if you were a customer that was concerned about security and privacy, we could colo a turn server at your location and kind of pop back and forth, and it would all be seamless. Uh, on the device, we use libraries from Tobango Telecom. Uh, they're located in Paris. It's a great, uh, great, great set of libraries to use. Uh, C-based, very flexible, very easy. Like I said, uh, Windows 7, Windows 8, Linux. We have an iOS, uh, an iOS app coming, along with a few other custom things that we'll be working on soon. Um, one of the, again, benefits, everything's secure. It's really a critical piece for a lot of our customers. But without, uh, without further ado, I do want to show it. Give me one second to get set up. So what I'm going to show you here is a 3D phase test block. Please don't ask me anything about 3D phase because I don't know anything about it. I mean, it looks really cool. So what I'm going to do, inspector in the field would do something very similar. So inspector in the field would do something very similar to what I'm going to do right now.
so you can't see this, but I'm, I'm, I'm setting up a call to, making WebRTC call to our services in AWS. And the device handles, it starts the call, it presents the offer. When the expert logs in, browser sends back an answer, the device handles all the ice pairing and all the, all the negotiation. And we set up the device so it's relatively dumb in the sense that it can take, we only set it up with one very simple uh, stun server. It takes most of its cues from uh, peer reflexive candidates that are passed in from the browser. So the, uh, the inspector would start the session up. He would most likely call, or he can send an, he can email this, uh, this information. But he'd, give, he'd, send, he'd call up a, an expert and he'd tell him to come join a session. Hey, there's some stuff I want to show you. There's a crack in this turbine that I, I'm not sure what to do with. And so the system generates a one-time, basically, session ID and password that is good for the duration of the call that they enter. And once the expert logs in, let's see, we get things kicked off. And any second now. There we go. So, there is the boroscope. All right, so I'm going to move this in a little bit. So if I'm the inspector, I might ask him, hey, move that in a little bit. And I want you to, take, I want you to measure that crack. So, he would do this. He'd tell him, take a 3D face capture. I want to do a depth measurement. So the device we don't send the same frame rate from the device to the web. So we're, we're looking at about 14 frames a second, roughly. So right now we're in, a, we're in freeze frame, and we're ready to start doing some measurements. So as the expert talking to the inspector who's measuring this crack, he says, I want to know how deep that is. So he, he can walk him through the procedure. He can tell him, hey, I want you to click on measurement. This is a touch screen. And I want you to do a depth profile. And in the event that they're not able to speak on the phone, they could, in fact, chat if they wanted to. Um, they, can, they can type whatever he likes in there. He also has this set of annotation tools over here. So he can say, take your depth profile here and here. And the, ex the, the inspector can then drag his circles wherever he'd like and prepare for a measurement. So he's able to take the measurement. And then the expert would say, well, you know what? I'd really like to see that. I'd like to see the depth profile of that crack. Click Views. He goes in and clicks Views. And let's take a look at a point cloud and turn the depth map on. And so now the expert is it is viewing this this data real time with the ins inspector on the ground, looking at a this could be in a gas turbine, for example, and he can you know tilt it a little bit. I want to take a quick look. I want to get a sense of what's what's there, and he can manipulate this. And in real time, the the expert can can view that and annotate if he wants to. He can make. type on it. They can go through this whole procedure, make the determination as to whether or not this is actually going to, this, the, this engine or this turbine is actually safe to use. So the benefit of that is it keeps assets that are in a scheduled window of downtime um, available when they need to be. So you have a scheduled window, you have to get some maintenance done. You don't want to bring it outside that window because it's very expensive. So you're talking about, um, for, an, for a plane, it's roughly $250,000 a day. For a nuclear power plant, it's about a million dollars a day. So there's a wide range. So this, this technology is really important to 
to, to not only the inspectors, but for companies that have these assets that, that require this sort of, we call healthcare for in industry. So as they're doing this, he can make the call, he can say, yes, that makes total sense. That's fine, it's fine to go that way. I'm gonna, t I'm gonna hang on to this picture. And so they can grab a series of these. They can, if I had left the annotations up, they would have kept them. They can save these, they can email them off. I could even take this session I could log out. I could pass these credentials on to anyone here. You could log in, see exactly what I'm seeing here. So we made it really flexible, really what we th thought was very useful. We've had lots of good feedback from customers. Um, go back to this. So like I said, we're using Debango. It's a really r incredibly efficient library takes care of uh, a lot of things for us, made, made our lives very easy. And like I said, a very simple strategy on the device. It handles, a lot, it handles pretty much everything in terms of setting the call up, doing the ice pairing, taking everything as a, a pure reflexive candidate. It, it works out really well. And just some uh, examples of uh, offer answer. And I read that kind of quick, but um, questions, comments? We have, a, we have a couple of minutes for questions, so please shoot away. If you could stand up and use the mics, that would be uh, the best. Or if you're on this side, I can, I can reach you. Gentlemen, yeah, just a quick question. So when the expert talks um, to the inspector, do they communicate over WebRTC, or is that over a cell phone or something? It depends. Some, the environments these are used in are, at, uh, they can be very, very loud. So if you're in an airline hangar, uh, it's, it's prohibitive to try and speak. So that's why we built the chat function, and that goes over, that's uh, JSON over WebSockets. I just was curious, um, is that device uh, that the inspector uses uh, connected to Wi-Fi? Right here. Oh, hello. <laughs> um, this one is, yes. So you can use any, any network it can, it can connect to. So this has... This, Does this it have a cell capability, I guess is what I was curious about. This device doesn't. Um, but the, it does have several expansion ports that you could plug something into. Cool. So uh, a generic question, just specifically about your application. Why did you take the decision to not bring the entire control over to the, to, you know, because you could, you know, could throw a point cloud and everything to, to the expert, and he could do it by himself. Why, why did you decide to leave everything to, to the person in the field? So there are a couple of reasons for that. Uh, primarily, the inspector on the ground has the ability to um, change things in real time. So the expert could say, I want you to do X, Y, or Z. So we, we didn't want to take the control, that dynamic control away. So he may say, okay, you took that measurement, now I want you to take three more. Or now I want you to move to a different stage of the compressor and take another set of measurements. There may be other characteristics. So if he took all of that back, just manipulated it to, to where he could just do it on his own screen, then he, we can reintroduce a delay where he has to go back to the inspector who may not be, still be in that facility or he may have lost the ability to make a call at that point. Um, some, of our, some of the facilities are in extremely remote places and your window for a, a reasonable connection is pretty narrow or can be. You actually just touched on part of my um, <coughs> My question, that you mentioned nuclear power plants as, a, as where this is, might be useful. Um, some of those places are places where you're not allowed to have Wi-Fi just because of security concerns. Um, there are other you know, plants as well that may have security concerns. Why do you guys, what do you, is there some sort of offline mode or? No, there's no offline mode yet, but that's something we have talked about. You can, if you, if you want to, record an entire inspection and play it back for an expert at a later time. Okay. Typically, when we're doing inspections, the inspector will have a, a MiFi with him, and that's usually they're usually authorized to have that for this exact purpose. Cool. Yes. How long before you guys get him on robots? Not long. <laughs> Not long. <laughs> 
I had another question on that, sort of the history of this. So the inspector, prior to having this device, uh, had to be the expert, sort of what you were saying. How did they do some of these depth measurements? Did they have other tools? Because this is, you're doing way more than just video mm -hmm. and RTC. You're, you know, there's a lot of, that was like computer vision, mm -hmm. some other techniques going on there. So what would, ha what would end up happening is there would be a, there really would be a lag. So I would take, as an inspector, I, not, as someone who's not able to make that judgment call, I would have to take be anywhere between two and 500 still images and send them to someone for either image analysis, and then a report would be compiled, or just a plain, you know, a straight report of images that someone could look at and say, oh, th th when I say someone could look at it, I mean several days or even weeks later could say, yes, okay, that, that asset is, is, within, is within range, or let's send someone else out to that asset. So okay, the, the turnaround time is, is in increased exponentially with, with technology like this bring it to these devices. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Chris. I, I, I personally